Good morning and welcome to Worship of the Alders Gate. It's so good to see you joining in and see all of you in the room here this morning. God bless you and um, may the presence of the Holy Spirit be with each of us as we worship together, whether we're in the room, whether we're at home live right now or watching later on the replay. Just a few announcements for you this morning. Um, before we start, first, I want to give you the question of the day. The questions keep us focused and help us know where we're headed. When I say the word Lent, what does it make you think of? What does Lent, if anything, what does Lent make you think of? Hmm. All right, so that's where we're going. Um, but very quickly, uh, here in the room and around North Reading and in Massachusetts, um, the masking mandates have been lifted, and that includes in this church building, which is a wonderful thing. So we will be singing uh, without masks today for the first time in a very long time. Um, going along with that is that we can do food events here in the church. We can plan them. And so I just want to flag this one for you. Aldersgate has been famous over the years for our free monthly breakfast on the second Saturday of each month. And we're going to have one again this coming Saturday, but it's just a little trial run. There may be a little bit of uh, rust on the gears, uh, so we need to work on that. It's RSVP only. So I'm letting you know this right now. There's a link that's going to drop in the comments. If you want to come and see the, the breakfast crew do their thing for the first time in two years, in fact, two years to the date of the shutdown in Massachusetts, March 12th, if you'd like to see that, make sure to RSVP um, so we can have a small-scale breakfast. Also, today is a communion Sunday. We have little individual servings here in the building, in the basket, on the table as you came in. And if you're at home, uh, go ahead and get bread and juice for yourself to use later on. Okay. So I will turn it over to the musicians to lead us into worship. Good morning. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. It's so great to see your beautiful faces and your wonderful smiles. And we'll get a chance to hear your wonderful voices without anything obstructing us. So please stand and sing hi to the Lord. Uh, morning, oh sorry, everything thirsting come to the water.
Amen. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, welcome to worship this morning. We have a question of the day. What do you think of when you hear the word Lent? Lent? Also, uh, if you have prayer requests this morning, please drop them in the comments, and those will go into a pastoral prayer at the end of the service. I'd like to welcome the children forward. Good morning, good morning. How are you all? It's ladies only this morning. I like this. How are you? Hi, Charlotte. There we go. Excellent. Well, it's good to see each of your faces. I'm glad that you're here. You feeling good, March? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So that question of um, what do you think of when you hear the word Lent, I thought we could talk a little bit about that right now. Because this is a weird word, this word Lent. Lent. L-E-N-T. I spelled it out for you because when I was little, maybe just... Charlotte. Sorry. Yes, I said your name. Do you want this paper? You can have this paper. I thought that the word was Lint. Lint. Look at that. Do you see that word Lint? What is Lint? Do you know? It's like the little fuzzy stuff that sticks to your clothes, right? Maybe in your in your dryer, yeah, you have a thing and it collects all the lint. I thought it was lint. It's not lint. It's lint. Uh-oh, can you pick that up for me? Let's show it again. It's lint. And this is a word that comes from very old English, very old English. And I want to show you what it's related to. It's related to this word. Lengthen. Do you see that? I put it in different colors so you could see L-E-N-T inside that word. I love knowing about the history of words. I think it's so interesting. And this is the history of that word, L-E-N-T, in lengthen, because it's related to an old word for spring, when the days begin to lengthen. Isn't that cool? So Lent, at least in the northern hemisphere, you ge geography buffs, is when the days lengthen, right? And that's, so what do we have when the days lengthen? What? Sunlight, right? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that the sun is setting later and later? And do you know that next Sunday um, we're going to spring forward, so the sun's going to set even later? You know that? If you come to church next Sunday, you're going to feel very sleepy because it's going to feel like it's an hour early. <laughs> he was like, oh no, you have a whole week to rest up. I warned you. Yeah. More fun. And during the time of Lent, part of what we're focusing on is having a little bit more God in our life, a little bit more focus for that. So just like the days are getting longer, there's more sun during the days, the idea is that we would spend more time with God. Yes, we would. And maybe dance. <laughs> that would be awesome. All right, so you all are going to Sunday school. Now Lucy is going to go hang out with Charlotte in the nursery. We appreciate your help, Lucy. <laughs> I wish you could see. We got a little one running around here. It's adorable. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Can you fold your hands? Can you fold your hands? Maybe. Not today. Okay. Lord God, thank you that the days are getting longer. Thank you that there is more sunshine in each day. Can you help us during Lent to spend a little bit more time with your son, Jesus? I pray for each of these kids and ask that you keep them safe at school. Bless them. Help them to do good work and be good friends there. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye. Uh-oh. I dropped it. There we go. Thank you. Uh, and you are up. This morning. Good morning. This morning's scripture comes from the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, 
if you are the son of God, command this stone to be a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on, on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jan. Until an opportune time, I know, right? Dun, 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 it's like a click. All right. The question of the day, what does the word Lent make you think of? It does not make me think of a crooked camera, so I'm, I'll just fix that. There we go. Um, reminder to drop your prayer requests in the comments and um, that today is a communion Sunday, so make sure you have your individual serving here in the building uh, for after the sermon time. Let's have a word of prayer. God, thank you for drawing us together this morning. Thank you for the beautiful weather forecast we have for today, the warming weather, the lengthening days. Thank you for this season outside and this season of Lent. God, help us to be open to you, to the movement of your spirit. Help me to think and to speak. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so what's the word Lent make you think of? Somebody in the room, or somebody tell me a comment from the faith. Sacrifice, thank you, Johnny, very logical. Yes. Fish, okay, fish, eating fish on Fridays, right? Yeah. Fast for meat, yeah, yeah. Preparation, spring. Sacrifice, yeah. Did anyone go Lent? Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Probably not, right? There's kind of a, a heaviness, right? Like a ponderousness to this season of Lent, if we have associations with it at all. There's this obligation to fast. People were mentioning fasting from meat entirely, or maybe um, in, on Fridays, especially, right? Eating fish on Fridays. Um, sort of like this obligatory, everybody must do uh, this one thing. And um, probably that somewhere in there, we're kind of bad about ourselves. Is that mixed in there for you too? Maybe, or it's a sort of depressing, discouraging season. I think we have a lot of that, and I want to look at this scripture lesson because it is the scriptural basis for our season of Lent, and see if we can open it up a little bit more from that, if we can see it more as an invitation, and maybe even as permission to do something fun. Some seasons give us certain permissions to do certain things. Like I think about my mother, who, when it's Christmas, coming up to Christmas season, she would quickly correct me and say, no, Rachel, it's during Advent. Uh, during Advent, she has permission to make all the cookies she wants to in preparation for Christmas. This is part of her tradition. If you know my mother, she is the captain of Weight Watchers in the universe, I think. She's like the best Weight Watchers person ever. And so she's very rigorous about her diet. But during Christmas, she can make all the cookies she wants because she gives them away, right? It's like permission. We have permission to do something new. And it may be, even be something delightful during Lent. It's a short period of time. We have 40 days, the 40 days that was um, written about here in the scripture. Biblically, that means a fullness of time, a full season. 
Um, and just as a side note, as I was reassuring Johnny uh, this morning, um, Sundays are not counted in Lent. And so uh, if you're feeling like taking on a fast, if you've already done that, uh, Sundays don't count. So the amen. Where's the amen signs this morning? Amen. Okay, so if it's a if it's a short term thing and Sundays are excluded, maybe this makes it a little bit more manageable. But another thing that gives us permission here in this culture to observe Lent is that we have so many people around us who do. This culture is very Catholicized, and a lot of us think about um, Lent as a more Catholic thing, don't we? We Protestants, we think, well, that's a Catholic thing. That Ash Wednesday thing, that's a Catholic thing. Well, yeah. It started off as a Catholic thing because so did the church, right? Church didn't get Protestants until about 500 years ago or a little bit more. So yeah, it's a Catholic thing. But I think when the Protestants said, we're going to get rid of a bunch of stuff, they might have thrown the baby out with the bathwater on this one. This is straight out of the biblical tradition. It is not more Catholic than anything else. And there's some real richness here. So let's take a look at this story and see if we can see Lent as a season of permission and a season of invitation. So if we go through, Jan, thank you for reading, uh, we notice that this, this time, this 40 days in the desert for Jesus occurs right after his baptism. So he's about 30 years old, he's out, he gets baptized by John the Baptist, that we hear the voice, you know, this is my son, listen to him. And before his ministry starts, before he goes out to be the hands and feet of God, the incarnate God, to minister to the world, he spends time only with God. I think that anybody watching or anybody here in this room would say, yeah, I would like to bring God's love and God's justice and God's peace to this world, which is a really messed up world, right? I would like to be an influence for God. If we want to do that, we have to spend time in, intentionally with ourselves investing in our own relationship, right? We have to start there. We have to create a good foundation for that. So this is Jesus before starting his ministry saying, I'm going to spend some serious time with God. Lent is serious time with God. The second thing I want you to hear is Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan where he was baptized and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was led there. This was not a man thing. This was not a thing that he was forced to do. This is something that Jesus perceived the Spirit moving him to do, and he said yes and went. The thing that I don't like about mandatory fasts for group discernment and group agreement that there should be a group fast, right? thing I don't like about that is that it doesn't apply to everybody evenly. I was saying last night at dinner with our pastor friend, um, we were saying, what are you preaching on tomorrow? It was a thrilling conversation. Sam left and went up to the bar to talk to a friend because he's like, you people are boring. Because <laughs> we, we were talking about our sermons. Um, but I said, you know, look, if the fast was um, no more swearing among the adults in the Fisher household, Wes and I would have a struggle with that. Or I... Uh, Wesley, don't even talk about me right now. I would have a struggle with that because I will use colorful language when it is warranted. Sometimes it is. Sam doesn't. So if there was a blanket fast, everybody stops swearing. Here I am, a whole lot of work myself and maybe drawing closer to God and doing good things. And Sam's basically off the hook for that one. What if you said blanket fast, everybody in Lent, no meat? Our vegan friends are like, ah, uh, okay. Doesn't do anything for them, right? This is a personal and individual thing that we are invited into by the Holy Spirit, called into, and we say yes, because this is important and impactful to us specifically. If you want to get closer to God, there are things in your life that will allow you to do that. A uniform blank of fast is, um, like I said, not, not my cup of tea. Okay, spirit-led, it is non-mandate, you are called. Jesus was called into the desert, into the wilderness. And I like this because it tells us something about what Jesus needed to fast from. Jesus himself, Jesus the human, the fully human man. Jesus was called to be away from people 
And Jesus was called to fast from food. What does this mean? Jesus loved to be around people. And Jesus loved food. And I'm thinking, this is my type of guy. I never had that insight about him before, that maybe he loved the company of other people, even to the point of distraction to his mission. Maybe. We don't know. But this very particular fast is the one that Jesus was called to, to be away from people and to be away from food. Some people, if you said, I want you to go spend 40 days not talking to anybody, D, they would say, hallelujah, wouldn't you? Right? That would not be a fast for you. This was a fast for Jesus. So he goes into the desert, social isolation, food fast. I'm thinking he's a fun guy. Okay, so 40 days of fasting, a fullness of time. And in the beginning of this period, I, I'm going to posit that the first number of days, Jesus was just dealing with himself, just dealing with self-discipline, the discomfort of being away from social contacts that he loved to be around, from his family, from his friends, being alone. He, he, he had opened up so much space, literally, in his day now because he was not around people. He's opening up that space, and he's inviting God to come into that space. On Wednesday night, this past Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we got together. Uh, it's kind of a nice turnout. What, like 25 of us or so came here on a Wednesday night. It's a big ask to ask the church to come out on a Wednesday night. But you did. And we planted seeds in a pot. And part of what we were talking about, this is a metaphor for us, was creating space for something new to grow. In order to plant that seed, you have to stick your finger down in the dirt, right? You have to make some room for it to plant the new thing. Jesus now has room to plant, I wouldn't say a new thing, but to strengthen that relationship with God in his life because he is away from people. And in a similar way, abstaining from food that time maybe that he would be eating, that he would be talking to people, is now time that he's just spending with God. So you see he's opening up space and allowing God to come in and just dealing with his own discomfort there, his own struggle. Can I do that? Can I have the absence of something important to me so that I can invite God to be more present with me? So the beginning I'm saying is self-discipline. And what we see as Jesus comes through that initial time is that Jesus becomes very empty in some ways, like of food, for example. Very empty, but at the same time is very, very full of the presence of God and of the Holy Spirit. So he's empty and full at the same time. Then, capstone project. Now the real challenge comes. The devil comes to tempt Jesus. And what we're going to understand when we hear the word devil um, is that this is a personification of the forces of evil in this world. By faith as Christians, one of the first things that we say when we uh, come to be baptized and then again when we're confirmed and when we join the church, the very first question we make is that we reject the forces of evil in the world. As Christian, we take evil seriously. It's not just like my bad choice today. It is this corporate thing that gains energy and momentum apart from the individuals participating in it. That's, that's my best understanding of what the devil is. I do not believe um, something with horns and a fork or whatever. That's, I don't believe that. I believe it is our way of understanding a personified or an embodied force of evil in the world. The devil comes to him and starts to tempt him. So now he's not just dealing with his own personal struggles. He's dealing with an external force of destruction. And this is what the devil says. Three different ways. He says, Jesus, why don't you do what I'm suggesting you do? I notice you're a very talented guy. You've got some really neat abilities there. You've got the power of God. That's really neat. That's special. Why don't you do what I suggest with that power, with that talent? Just, just follow my lead with your gifts and graces. You're going to feel so much better. 
right? He offers him bread. He says, turn this stone into bread. Then he offers him all the kingdoms of the world. You can be the most powerful person on earth. And then he offers him physical safety, right? Throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple and the angels will catch you. So your, your physical, your life, your physical body will be safe. Jesus, you have the power to do all this. You have the gifting. Just do what I suggest to you. And Jesus is able to resist this. As much as he wants that physical comfort, as much as he might be interested in being all powerful, like my mom, the Weight Watchers queen, um, I just tease him. I just needed a laugh. You all are very, they're very quiet in the room this morning. Uh, right? Might have wanted to be all powerful, might have wanted to know that he was going to be physically safe, his life was going to be safe. Those would have been wonderful things. But Jesus is able to say no because he's full of the Spirit of God. Now, I want you to notice something also here. The devil's use of scripture. Right? Jesus, when he's first tempted, turned the uh, rock into bread. And then, uh, you know, I, I'll show you all the kingdoms of the world. Jesus says no to the devil by using God's word and scripture. And the third time, the devil's like, well, okay, I'm on to you. You like using scripture? Let me use some scripture, too. And he gives him scriptural reasons, not just one, but two, straight from the, from the Hebrew Bible, about why he should do, Jesus should do, what the devil is suggesting. I want you to hear this. You can use the Bible to justify almost anything. You can go and you can find a phrase there that will justify anything. Anything that you want to do. Right? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, you can. But this is the thing. Sometimes people will say to you, well, the Bible says this. Well, that's great. Without the interpretation of the Holy Spirit, you could use it to do very wrong things, like agree with the devil here. I have a fun story. Just to lighten it up here for a second. Fun story. Sam and I were first married uh, we're living in Northern Virginia, 2001. I was changing my name from my maiden name to uh, my new married name. And it takes a minute to, you have to get your marriage certificate and you have to get the thing, the driver's license reissued or whatever. And we really, this was like a month after our wedding. And so the post office has a little postcard card and says, you have a package at the post office. And I said, okay go down to the post office and get there, and I realized that I have forgotten my marriage license, which has my new name. So my driver's license says Rachel Susan Meredith at that point. So I don't have the ID to pick up this package, but I had, sitting next to me on the seat like a good seminary student, I had my Bible, and it was a Bible that had been a wedding gift, and on the front of it, maybe you have one of these, it had our names. So it said, Mr. and Mrs. Sam and Rachel Fisher. And I said, oh, well, here I have this evidence of my new name on the Bible. Maybe, maybe I could show the clerk. I mean, I'm not trying to get away with anything here. I just want to get my package. But this might serve as ID. So I pick it up. I go into the post office, and I say to the clerk, hi, uh, I have a package. Uh, we just got married. It didn't change my name. Um, but this is my new name. See, it's on the Bible. It must be true. And this post office clerk said, oh, but the devil used the Bible, too. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And I was like, you are right. Yes, I got the one who went to church. Yeah. I did get my package. Yes, she believed me. But she was right. I was like, Shazam, man. 20 years later, I'm remembering her. That was great. Yeah, devil used the Bible, too. Takes interpretation, Jesus, but full of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to notice something kind of funny about this. I, I think this is, even though we go through this text every year, I did not notice in particular until this time. You know how the devil said, turn the stone into bread, and the devil said, you will become ruler over the whole, you can become ruler over the whole world, and the devil said, your life can be protected ultimately? All of those things end up happening in Jesus' ministry, right? Jesus multiplies bread miraculously. Jesus, by faith, we, we call Jesus the king of kings, right? The ultimate king over the universe, not even just the world. And Jesus' body is eternally 
not body, life is eternally protected by God because of the resurrection. All of this actually comes to pass. So it's not the things that the devil is proposing to him that are wrong. It's the way of getting there, right? The devil says, I see your gifts and graces. Why don't you do what I suggest with them? That's where the problem is. So as we are invited to fast from something, invited into the season of Lent, as we're invited to consider how we might, for this short 40-day period, make some extra room for God so that something new can be planted in us, as we consider that, I want you to hold on to something that we learned from Number one, you have to feel called. So if you are sitting there and say, I have absolutely no inclination, like I, God is not working on me right now, Rachel, and you say that honestly, okay. Like what if Jesus hadn't been called into the desert at that time? He wouldn't have been called into the desert. That's all. God will move in you at the right time. The church provides a little nut here. But maybe, maybe there's nothing. I think there's probably something, though. Remember that it's your specific fast. It's your specific project. So it's not like, it doesn't really work. Johnny, what are you doing for Lent? Did you do anything? I gave up all beverages except for water. That's right. You told, gave up all beverages except for water. No caffeine. No caffeine is the big one. Okay, so make loud noises. If you see Johnny nodding off, <laughs> that's quite a fat. That'd be a hard one. Do you have a headache? Yeah, that's why I keep shaking. Oh, I would have a headache. All right, that's a big sacrifice. All right, anybody, did anybody else feel called already to, to do something? What? I decided to work on being judgmental, but now you're telling me I'm going to fly on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> We're hearing, um, working on not being so judgmental. To skip Sundays because it's Resurrection Day uh, makes it much better. So now expect a whole boatload of judgment coming from this direction. No. <laughs> See, I wrote the rules. You wouldn't get Sundays off, but I don't write the rules. So yeah. So it needs to be specific to you. The thing that you need to work on, that God's calling you to work on, to create that space. Um, there is also a way to think about fasting as being called to something rather than being called from it. And that might help you because if you're like, okay, Rachel, we just had two years of a pandemic. I gave a lot of stuff up that I didn't want to. I've been fasting for a long time from, I don't know, normal life. And I'm feeling kind of um, depleted right now. Please don't ask me to do this for religious reasons. Fine. What about being called to, right? Uh, called to grace, little misjudgment there, right? Um, called to the healthier living, right? Maybe sort of a cleanse, right? You can reframe it so it's not I am not going to, but I am going to, right? So think about that. See if that opens something up for you. Um, even something like a, you know, a daily devotion. I want to really do daily devotions. I've always meant to, and I'm hit or miss. Like, instead of saying, I'm not going to skip my daily devotion, you can say, I am going to spend five minutes with God, or whatever it is. We have a little bit of ideas. Where did I put them? Uh, many of you received a Lent in a bag if you're on the church uh, uh, directory list. And this little thing um, that Sam helped me with so much too, has a whole bunch of different activities in there. And like, if you need some inspiration, there's different things you can do. There's weekly Facebook posts, breath prayers, there's photo challenges, there's um, one-off activities. Those are things that might help inspire you. But I just encourage you to take the opportunity. The calendar is saying to us, it is Lent. You're invited to create some more space for God. Ultimately, your motive is more important than your result. Jesus got the results that the devil was talking about, but with a completely different motivation. The motive is, God, you've given me this life, these gifts, these graces. Help me to do something so that I can better love and serve you and my neighbor in this world. That's why Jesus 
multiplied the loaves. That's why Jesus became the King of Kings. That's why Jesus went to the cross and showed us new life in the resurrection. It was not to make himself great. It was so that he could better love God and serve this world. So it is your motivation. I'm excited to see if any of you accept the invitation. As I was working up my notes this morning, um, I thought I had chosen something to give up for Lent, which is um, articulating criticism, right? Like saying critical things. It's hard to stop the thoughts, but I'm very judgmental. And so like, maybe I could just not speak them. But this morning, then I got another one. And I'm like, oh, I see. I don't think there's two, though. I don't think we have to take on two fast. So that's got to be in there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, all right, now I'm chattering. OK, that's your invitation to observe a holy Lent. Now, after some special music, we will be celebrating uh, Holy Communion. So if, if you're at home, get ready to get juice, and I'll meet you at the table. I now invite you to join in a service of Holy Communion. If you are at home, uh, your own bread and juice will suffice. And if you are in the room, we have individual serving cups. There are words uh, that the PowerPoint will show us to recite. I'll look for those. All right. 
A reminder that in the United Methodist Church, communion is open. It's an open table, which means that it's between you and God. If you choose to participate, uh, you are welcome to be here, and we invite you to come. Also, in the Methodist Church, we have grape juice uh, to celebrate communion out of consideration for our friends and sober community. All right. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore an ark on the waters and saved Noah and his family, made a covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made with us your covenant people. When your people forsook your commandment, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still small voice. And so with your people on earth, company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness where he fasted for prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life and presented him alive to the apostles for 40 days and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts that during these 40 days of Lent, we may get, be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night when he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and to the extent of my voice. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body of the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to take the bread. This is the body of Christ. And I invite you to take the cup. This is the cup of salvation.
COVID things have gone away, maybe next month we'll be able to do a way of doing communion where we come from. That'd be something. And then you wouldn't have to have those little cups for people at home. I don't know where they're made, uh, but they don't have They do it in okay. A few announcements for you. Our last call for prayer requests. If you have them. Um, oh, uh, there is an offering link that has dropped comments. That's a way for you to give if you are here in the building without cash on you. Um, thank you for those gifts. We have a special collection going on this week uh, for the Ukraine. It is uh, ministry, uh, United Methodist Church's ministries in Ukraine. Uh, this is direct material assistance through our 100% of it goes to the work on the ground there. Uh, the church pays the overhead on that. Uh, just to the end of the day, uh, it's a special collection. So if you go to the giving link, you'll see a category special collection. Put it there. Thank you, Teach. And um, if you're in person, you can put it in the offering plate. Um, mm -hmm. Ooh, I mentioned at the beginning of the service, but in case you didn't do it yet, if you want to come to the warm up of the uh, monthly church that we're starting again, you need to please use the Sign Up Genius link to do that. Uh, 50 people at that breakfast. This Friday is the very final of the six event series that started back in October. It is uh, perfect for those of you fasting from meat. It's one fish three ways. Uh, Putney, who's a longtime friend of this church and a member at Union Congregational Church, uh, he's given us actually a full meal of recipes. It's wonderful. Um, that's Friday night at 6 o'clock. That's a church fundraiser. And along with that, information about that is your email. Uh, along with that is a raffle. In case you're busy Friday night or don't like fish, but you want to do something to support the church, the raffle is two dozen gourmet cookies in a basket made by our own Sheila Shedd, chocolate shortbread, plus $100 at Kohl's. So kind of a nice prize, $5 a ticket, and that just goes to support the ministries of the church. And you may win a prize. All right, I think that's the announcements that we have. So, for celebration and thanks, hmm, no one gave me anything, and I'm thinking off the top of my head, what am I especially thankful for uh, today? Well, I'll tell you what, um, hopefully without being patronizing in the literal sense, um, my dad comes down here uh, many church mornings and hangs out with people we thank all the time, uh, George and Kevin and Chuck sometimes doing work here in the mornings, but he said recently, you know, we need to have a, uh, the TV monitor in the foyer doing announcements again. And we should have the church sign in the front of the church mention the Wednesday Facebook. Just noticing things like that where we can do better. And so I really appreciate that. Forward to keep doing better things. Oh, thank you for that. We appreciate you and all you've been doing. He just moved up here about six months ago and already is making himself very, very useful. So thank you very much. A lot of times, a uh, family of the pastor gets worked really hard and not thanked, so thank you. All right, I think that's what we have. Uh, thank you for sending in your prayer requests. All right, let's begin the attitude of prayer. Lord God, we thank you, especially this morning, for the movement of the Holy Spirit even calls us to faith, God, the scriptures, and that God today may be encouraged to you. Thank you for the presence of the Spirit in our lives. God, in our church community, we have so many prayer requests, which have not been shared well. So we lift to you those first. And ask, God, that you would give us patience and faith and discernment as we see you responding to these prayers in your time. To those prayers, we add those for those struggling with or in recovery from addiction, and for those with mental illness, depression, and anxiety. God, please help bring healing 
and wholeness and new life. We continue in prayer for Bob Kingsley's sister, Marie LaRose's friend, Marie Patrice, in hospice. We continue praying for Eli Spicer, healing up after uh, being hit by a car. We pray for Rob Wilkinson's mother, Ray Pitts, who's in the hospital after a heart attack, and ask that you would help the doctors with a plan for treatment. Please be with Jan Condry's family member, Deb Roy, with an underlying conditions and COVID. God, we pray for the people of Ukraine and wisdom for world leaders and even miracles, God, in interceding and intervening in this terrible violence. God, just please help us, Lord. This is frightening to look at, and we ask that you would give those who lead extraordinary and divine wisdom. We pray for the people who are displaced by this war and who are adapting to a new country in the Ukraine and perhaps elsewhere in the world. And we pray for peace. God, there are many joys among us today uh, for the encouraging COVID numbers leading to lifting of masking requirements, uh, progress in this country, and for being able to hug and to sing without masks. Uh, we have a joy that D. Costantino is applying to college in Utah, and we ask that you would bless that next step for her. And finally, God, today we thank you for the inspiring courage of the Ukrainian people and the way that they have reflected back to us the importance, God, of what you've given us here, that each person matters, that each vote matters, God, the, the lessons of democracy that we learn from you about your love and concern for each and every person. God, thank you for them and preserve their lives. Now we ask, Lord, that you would hear us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you all. Thank you so much for being with us this morning online and in person. And I'll turn it over to the musicians for a final song. Let's all stand and join in singing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Have you still a refuge? Take it to 
Yeah. 